Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Today we have a battle for you starring Big Boy 69, I'll bet he says that to all the girls, in the British Tier 10 destroyer HMS Daring. And he is running a unique captain in his Daring. Yeah, it's not me, but it's the next best thing. <laughs> Uh, that's the bad captain uh, from the World of Warships cartoons. I don't know about you, but I think he's actually pretty good, although he's highly distracting. But anyway, HMS Daring, what do you need to know? Well, it is considered to be, if not the best, then one of the best tier 10 destroyers. She's definitely not perfect. You can't get the concealment down to less than six kilometers, which is good, but not great. And her top speed of 35 knots is kind of sluggish. You can get 36 in a bit with a speed flag, but that's it because the ship does not come with an engine boost. She also doesn't have a huge amount of health, 20,800, unless you're running Survival Expert, which Big Boy is, which tops his health out at 24,300. However, that's counterbalanced by the fact that she does have a pretty good heal. On the plus side, the firepower of this ship is pretty damn impressive. Now, they are only 113mm guns, so the penetration isn't great, but the armour-piercing shells have improved fuses and penetration angles. And the high explosive, in common with other British destroyers, does hit pretty damn hard. Although you're probably going to want to take the IFHE skill so that it remains competitive against the kind of cruisers that you're going to be facing, like the Alexander Nevsky down there, who's just realised he's been spotted, can't see what it is, and he's popped his radar. Russian radar does have a very long range, but it doesn't have great duration, and to be honest, the Nevsky could probably have benefited from waiting a couple of seconds to allow Big Boy to get further into the radar envelope before firing it up. Because Big Boy is already out of radar range, after a swift about turn, and taking some really big steps in the other direction. The presence of that Russian radar cruiser down there is going to make capping uh, difficult. He's popping some torpedoes, just in case anybody decides to poke around the corner. And it's at more or less this point when Big Boy is going to pop his hydro. He's still spotted, by the way, but nobody's shooting at him. The British destroyer hydro is unlike the hydro on destroyers of other nations. There it goes, and enemy torpedoes spotted. It's different in that it's more of a self-defense hydro, because it has a very short range but extremely long duration. Perfect for sitting inside smoke screens and giving you advance warning of any torpedoes heading your way. Not so good for sitting inside smoke screens and giving you advance warning of any enemy destroyers heading your way. Speaking of the smoke screens, the British smoke is also very different. It has a short duration, but you get lots and lots of charges. Bad Boy actually has seven charges on his smoke screen generator, so he's almost certainly running the superintendent skill. And while the duration is short, so is the cooldown. You do get to burn through those charges very, very quickly, although he's probably not going to be using it this close to a Russian radar cruiser. Hang on a second, he's been spotted. There's an enemy ship within six kilometers. Oh, there it is. It's a Yugamo. Uh, well, this is a gunfight that he could win easily if it was a one-on-one, -on -one, but it's not a one-on-one. -on -one. There are a lot of enemy cruisers and battleships down there just itching to add their firepower to the fight and take out another, because one of his teammates has already sunk, enemy destroyer. He's popped his smoke out of desperation and is no doubt praying that the Alexander Nevsky's radar is still on cooldown. Look at the punishment he's inflicting on that Yugamo. And also note that his smoke screen has almost expired. The friendly Georgia takes the kill, but not before the Yugamo manages to get its torpedoes away, and he's caught in a bad spot here. How big is that gap? Is it big enough? I think it is. Oh! <laughs> nice! Careful. Doesn't want to leave the cap circle. Although the Nevsky's radar is almost certainly about to come off cooldown, so he might be forced to leave the cap circle, whether he wants to or not. Although, actually, no. The Nevsky is too far away. He may even be running his radar now. It wouldn't make any difference. He's too far away to be caught by it. Smoke's already good to go again. Like I said, very, very short cooldown between smoke charges. The enemy team have already managed to take one of the caps. 
pops the smoke, starts farming damage on the Iowa, and there's the cap claimed. The enemy team are about 100 points ahead, however. Well, they did, until the kills were equalised. The enemy team do, however, still have around about a 50-point lead, thanks to the fact that they were able to take and hold on to capture point Charlie uh, for some time before Big Boy was able to consolidate the hold here on capture point Bravo. There's the Nevsky again. It'd be nice to see a dead radar cruiser, especially if you're in a destroyer. Uh, he's inside radar range now, although I strongly suspect he did pop his radar earlier, but was too far away to actually catch Bad Boy with it. I don't know for sure, but I suspect that Bad Boy is not running the IFHE skill. I say that because he's switching to armor piercing when shooting at enemy cruisers. Uh, which, you know, even if you do have the IFHE skill, if you have a target like that to shoot at, the AP is probably still going to do more damage. He switched to the HE to try to get some fire started on the Iowa, and then back to the HE with the Nevsky in the turn and in full retreat. And he has managed to start two fires, which you probably wouldn't expect to see if he was running the IFHE skill. And looking at the damage that his high explosive shells were doing to the Iowa and the Nevsky, Remember, these shells are capable of doing 1,700 damage per hit if they penetrate, and those are definitely not penetrating, so... Pretty sure he's not running the IFHE skill. But the thing is, with the daring, the IFHE skill is really just a crutch. You don't really need it if you're any good. Just know when to use the armor piercing with its improved fuses and penetration angles, and when the AP is only going to bounce, then you use the high explosive and use it to start fires. The team's still about 50... actually, no. <laughs> now they're more like 150 points behind. They've just lost another battleship with Vladivostok. It's been sunk by the enemy Pommen. And looking at the team's dispositions, it's not looking too good. Everybody's sort of clustered around the middle of the map, around the cap that they already control, uh, which is inviting some dangerous crossfires from those enemy ships pushing up from the south on both flanks. Speaking of enemy ships pushing up, he's got some torpedoes away against the Pommen, and they are looking pretty good. The Daring's torpedoes, by the way, are exactly the same as the torpedoes that you get on the Minotaur. And those are looking very, very good. Are the torpedoes going to be enough? One flood, three torpedo hits. It is enough. Bismarck to the south. And he is inside the Bismarck secondary gun battery range. Pops the smoke. Really use some visibility of the Bismarck. Does anybody have radar? Why, yes, I do, says a teammate. And there's the Bismarck. 50% health. Angled. High explosive. Actually, high explosive is working pretty well on the Bismarck superstructure. Smoke screen is already starting to expire. There's a fire on the Bismarck. Nice. So it's definitely time to put some distance between himself and the Bismarck's secondaries. The Bismarck appears to be suffering from a severe case of overconfidence. The amount of firepower being concentrated on him is almost certainly not something he's going to survive. Uh, which is good because a whole bunch of ships have just died in a very short period of time. Fortunately, most of them on Big Boy's team. So the sinking of that Bismarck couldn't have come at a better time. And hang on a second, torpedoes from back there. That is not good. Those are probably from, well actually there's a choice of two culprits, either the enemy Halland or the Harugamo. And the fact that enemy destroyers are on that side of the map already is not going to be good news. There is one spot of good news, however, and it was very unexpected. We've got a Kleber capping Cat Point Alpha, all the way over on the western side of the map. So the casualties that the enemy team have suffered, with the exception of the Bismarck that was just killed now, appear to have mostly been suffered over on the western end of the map, which has turned out to be incredibly good news for the Club Bear, because I didn't see any way he was possibly going to be able to challenge Cap Circle Alpha, not with his horrific surface detection range, but the destruction of all enemy resistance over in the direction of Alpha has allowed him to get in there and he's probably going to take it. In fact, he has taken it. Well done, the Club Bear. Meanwhile, over here, still in the middle of the map, things are starting to get a bit toasty. Enemy Harugamo occupying the smoke screen up there, torpedoes away, and there's a Salem uh, not inside radar range, which, well, I suppose is good news. 
given that Big Boy is attempting to go unspotted after getting a couple of shots away. Of course, the bad news is that means everybody is now focusing fire on the friendly Bismarck. And, uh, I mean, the Bismarck's a tough ship, but you just saw what happened to a Bismarck the second everybody starts focusing on. The difference here is the friendly Bismarck at least has the sense to duck into cover, although, you know, whether or not he's done it in time, hopefully he's going to stay in there. And hopefully those torpedoes can do something about that Harugamo, because the rate of fire from the guns on that thing puts even the Daring's 2.6 second reload to shame, and nope, Bismarck is dead. It's like he burned to death. Oh, one torpedo. Yes, he's got him. Fantastic news. Not in time to save the Bismarck, of course, but it's a kill. We'll take it. Now, you might be thinking, what the hell's he doing smoking up in front of the Salem? Doesn't he know it's a radar cruiser? And, well, yeah, he, of course he knows it's a radar cruiser. But what he's trying to do here is bait him out into wasting his radar, because he's right at the extreme range of the Salem's radar. Don't forget, the Salem has the sort of Walmart version of the Des Moines radar. It doesn't have great range. And this would have been a great idea, and he would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for that pesky Halland. <laughs> because, of course, the idea here was bait out the Salem's radar, and then scoot and get out of there. And it would have worked if he hadn't been surface spotted by the Halland anyway, so he's in a gunfight here, whether he likes it or not. And a gunfight in a destroyer within shooting range of a Salem, even if it is the Walmart version of the Des Moines, it still has the Des Moines guns. And this is incredibly risky, but, well, it's the Halland's fault, it's not his. He's taken a lot of damage. Why doesn't he finish the Halland off? Well, because he is taking a lot of damage. It's not just the Salem and the Halland shooting at him. And honestly, I think this is the right choice. He's desperately trying to go unspotted. Because he could finish off the Halland, but I doubt he would survive it. And he has managed to go unspotted. Torpedoes away. If it wasn't for the Halland being there, that would have been a great move. But the Halland was there. And the decision to let the Halland get away and survive, I think, was definitely the right decision. Luckily, he's in the daring, so his smokescreen is ready to go again already. And the Salem has been sunk, and even if he hadn't, his radar was going to be on cooldown. Unfortunately, uh, everybody else has been sunk as well. He has one surviving teammate in the Goliath, and they're fighting against four enemies. And the Goliath is all the way down there to the south, and not of any immediate assistance. He's not even in a position to spot the Yamato that's closing in on the smokescreen, who has managed to avoid all the torpedoes, although now he is. And this has to be a bit of a brown trouser moment for a Goliath, because the Yamato can penetrate it from any angle. The smoke has expired. Remember, there is still a Halland to the north who's flooding the area with torpedoes, but is probably not anxious to get himself spotted and into another gunfight with a ship like the Daring. Unless, of course, he's done the smart thing and... Oh. Unless, of course, he's done the smart thing and backed off outside of the Daring shooting range, and that looks like exactly what he's done. So, this Goliath is in all kinds of trouble. They need to finish off the Yamato. Smokescreen, back up again. Goliath obviously now spotting both the Yamato and the Halland, although the Halland is out of range, but he is able to take care of the Yamato, which came just in time to keep the Goliath intact. The Goliath is, by the way, running his own Hydro right now, which has much better range than the Daring's Hydro, and he has comfortably spotted the Halland's torpedoes. The Halland, of course, is now going to be getting the undivided attention of the Goliath, so it would it would be in his best interest to stop shooting. And it looks like he has. That's actually bad news for Big Boy and the Goliath. It appears that the Halland on the enemy team is capable of thinking and breathing at the same time, and that's never, never very welcome. Okay, two other enemy ships still intact, both of them to the south. The North Carolina and the Iowa. The good news, Big Boy's team are slightly ahead on points, by about 20 points. The bad news, they can't rely on that 20 points because the Iowa has just started flipping capture point Bravo. And there's more than enough time for the enemy team to win, even if they don't kill anything else. They'll win on points if they're allowed to take that capture circle. 
So Big Boy doesn't really have any choice here but to start shooting at the Iowa. And by the way, he's gone through all seven of his smokescreen charges and he has no heals left. Now I must confess to feeling a certain amount of sympathy for the captain of the Iowa over there because initially it appeared that he was just trying to win a bit harder. Bad Boy set a fire. A single fire, which the Iowa isn't wasting his damage control on. But he's not staying inside that cap circle and flipping it. And this is why you could be forgiven for thinking that the Iowa was just trying to win harder. But here's the thing. He's outspotted, obviously, by the daring. He's never going to be allowed to flip that cap uncontested. So the Iowa has to choose between staying in the cap and blocking it, while slowly getting farmed to death by either Big Boy's daring and or the Goliath, or attempt to chase down and sink at least one of his tormentors. And neither of those are particularly great choices, because he's outspotted by Big Boy, who can pick and choose when and if he's going to shoot at him. And there's another fire, and the high caliber award. I wouldn't at all be surprised, there it is, to see the damage control, because he's going to die if he doesn't use it. He's turning away from the Goliath, but the Goliath's high explosive shells don't really care what angle the Iowa is presenting. He's managed to get some shots out with his rear turret, does some damage, but it's not enough, and the Iowa is dead, which has only extended Big Boy's team's lead even more than now nearly 200 points ahead, and they're still in control of two of the cap circles. So, speaking of trying to win harder, three and a half minutes remaining, nearly 200 points ahead, with more points coming in thanks to possession of two of the three cap circles than the enemy team have coming in. That Goliath really needs to stop shooting at the North Carolina, because they can now easily win on points as long as they don't lose any more ships. And it's at this point where Big Boy has just realised that he's on four kills. He could get the Kraken unleashed if he kills North Carolina. And yes, Big Boy, that is true. But you could also die. And that would leave your Goliath getting outspotted by the Halland and shot at by the North Carolina. And the Goliath does not have an awful lot of health left. So... I mean, he's getting shot at by the North Carolina anyway, which probably means that the Halland is up here somewhere and doing the smart thing, which would be consistent with his performance thus far and just keeping the Goliath spotted. But here's the thing, big boy. You're not fooling anybody. We know why you came over here to kill the North Carolina. It wasn't to keep the last surviving teammate alive. You weren't trying to do any favours for the Goliath. You were trying to win harder. <laughs> you were trying to get that last kill and the Kraken unleashed. And oh, somebody's flipping capture point. Bravo. So the Halland is not up to the north and was not spotting the Goliath. The North Carolina was doing all of the spotting for himself. And even though the Goliath has very graciously said, oh, look, he's on less than 4k health, I'll stop shooting. And you can take the kill and get the Kraken unleashed, which was very, very generous of him. And you are going to kill that North Carolina get the kill and take the Kraken Unleashed. But that last salvo from the North Carolina, well, look what it's going to do to you. Ooh. <laughs> and the Helen saw it. And there's the kill. There's the Kraken Unleashed. But that salvo from the Halland, who is probably now out of shooting range because the Halland's guns don't have great range, that could very easily have killed you into the process. And to be completely fair, you would have probably still won because there's not an awful lot of time left. And you're not far short of 300 points ahead, although you would have been less than 300 points ahead if the Halland or the North Carolina had managed to kill you. The Goliath still, in the time that's remaining, would almost certainly have won by himself. And you probably don't have to worry about the Halland chasing you down because, well, he's got more health than you, but he doesn't have that much more health. And you could probably finish him off with one salvo, and you'd probably get the first salvo because you'd have spot him. He might still be able to kill you by getting a shot off while yours are in the air, but you'd still win because the Goliath is alive. So it's all good. Just don't try and tell us that you did it all for the Goliath's sake. <laughs> you were trying to win harder. 
you know it to be true. And to be completely fair, you did get away with it. You did get the Kraken unleashed. You have survived by the skin of your teeth. And you are going to win this match. But you might not get away with it next time. And on that bombshell, congratulations. And I think we deserve one of my world-famous handcrafted post-battle result screens to celebrate. Congratulations, bad boy. Don't do it again. <laughs> okay, we're all watching you now. Uh, but congratulations all the same. And I hope everyone enjoyed it. That's it for today. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.